Good morning, everybody. Chris Grandy, PlanWithChris.com. Today's core question. Why don't people just invest in stocks that pay 4% in dividends instead of using the 4% rule to withdraw 4% of their portfolio every year? Okay, first off, some background. What's the 4% rule? Fidelity did a study some years ago and determined that through most market cycles, if you could keep your portfolio withdrawals to 4% or less per year, your money would last throughout retirement. Uh, and again, that's most market cycles, few outliers. So a lot of people in our industry use this 4% rule and it's really stuck around and it's stuck. So this person is asking, why not just buy stocks with 4% dividend and there's your 4% and you don't touch your principal. The point around that is realize that in today's interest rate environment where you're getting 2% on CDs and the S&P dividend rate is somewhere in the twos, 4% is actually kind of high yield. And you're going to have to be um, comfortable with a little bit more risk if you decide to invest in 4% dividend paying stocks first off. Number two, you're also in a stock portfolio. So if you put a million dollars in, um, in into say 4% dividend stocks and you're using $40,000 a year. So let's say you have a million dollars and you have a $25,000 a year social security benefit. So combined, your $40,000 in interest plus $25,000 in Social Security gives you $65,000 a year of income and you're happy with that. Okay, great. Um, challenge though is, is, let's say, and it seems to be happening every 10 years now, let's say we have a 50% market crash, 40% market crash or something, and your million dollars drops down to $500,000. Theoretically, you're still getting a $40,000 a year dividend but chances are under those situations, seeing that it's higher than average, there's a good chance that dividend will probably get cut. What some enhancement to that 4% research has said that if you can lower your, if the market falls and your portfolio falls, and you can lower your withdrawal rate to 4% of the current amount, so therefore 500,000, if, if a million drops to 500,000, 4% is 20 grand a year, you'd be living, you'd be withdrawing 20 grand a year, not 40. And perhaps if your dividends didn't get cut, you'd be letting that other 20 reinvest at low prices, then that actually even further improves upon. So of course, that's true. I mean, if you take less payout during the tough times, you're going to improve the situation. But, you know, emotionally, it's kind of easy to talk about that. But I want you to really think about your portfolio or your net worth. I mean, in rough times too, your real estate value could drop. So a lot of people get really emotional about this, but I want you to really visualize. It's, you have a million, you have two, you have $3 million, $4 million, wherever you are, in net worth or something like that. I want you to envision that cut in half. I want you to think of, I want you to visualize opening that statement. It's usually a September 30th or December 31st statement. I want you to, at least that's the way it's been, I want you to visualize opening that up and having half the money you had just the six months before. And think about not necessarily being sure it's just going to pop back up. All right. How does that feel? If you think you might be a little bit uneasy, then you need to really think about this, putting your only money in a 4% dividends and just trying to live off that. Secondly, um, if you think you can handle it, but then what if dividend, if your income gets cut, I mean, if you're really on the edge there and then your income gets cut, let's say you were bringing 65,000 a year in, now you're bringing 45 because you you had to take those that cut in dividends. How's that feel? Would you imagine your retirement with one third less income than you're planning? So with those two in mind, think about the 4% rule is a little bit, you know, again, it's good, but I actually prefer something completely different. I've written about this. Anybody who knows me, I've talked about it. I've done seminars on this topic. Floor plus upside. And it's an idea that I had in my head. And then, you know, when I found the organization I used to belong to, the Retirement Income Industry Association, which was a think tank of advisors and academics and, and people at large financial firms and, and research people on how to create better retirement outcomes, this was a big thing that they were a proponent of, of something called floor plus upside. And what that basically means is 
creating an income floor that's very stable and then with excess funds create upside. So in this simple situation, let's go back to the million dollars needing $40,000 a year. You know, if you're 70 years old, you'll get, you know, if you bought an annuity, you get about a 6% payout. If you, an immediate annuity, that is. If you're 75, if you're 80 years old, you'll, you'll get close to a 10% payout. So let's say you're retiring at 70, you have the same million dollars you need, and this is simplified. If you wouldn't exactly do it like this, maybe, but you needed forty thousand dollars a year. Well, you could then invest seven hundred thousand dollars into uh, into into uh, an immediate annuity, and you start collecting your forty thousand dollars a year, guaranteed for life. Okay, and then the other three hundred thousand you invest. And you don't care what the market does because you're not touching this money. You don't need to touch it. It's not providing you income. It doesn't scare you. So when the market's going up and down 20, 30%, you don't touch it. In that case, now mathematically, you might be able to show that if you kept all the money invested, you would do better off. But psychologically, from a security standpoint, from not knowing the future, you know, the past is not the future. And we can say things like the market always bounces back, et cetera. But remember, you're going to retire once once and you have one shot so you really want to just trust it all to the fact that hey in the past this is what happened I mean again you want to use the past as some kind of idea but do you really want to bank everything on that and if you're someone who wants a little bit more security then floor plus upside would eliminate the whole variability and having to do this 4% income thing because the 4% is really the pie I call it the pile theory you, know, you build up a pile of money and then you withdraw from that pile every year to retire on, and you hope it doesn't run out or doesn't crash, etc. No, I mean, again, not super nuanced. I like the more thoughtful way of some kind of floor plus upside. Now, you can also accomplish floor plus upside with, with bonds, with CDs, lots of ways to do it. But the idea, the general idea that your income, you create a stable floor of income, and then you, um, and then whatever assets you have remaining, you would focus towards the future, towards growth, towards living a long time, longevity, maybe towards long-term care insurance, just stuff that, uh, you know, that when inflation kicks in. So as that portfolio grows, you could actually peel profits off that and increase your annuity with it or your monthly income. So just, just my thoughts on that. You know, a lot of people ask about the 4% rule. I do see this question, this type of question pop up on Quora a lot, some variation of it. But I'm a big fan of floor plus upside. I'm going to include a couple links to some floor plus upside commentary I've written. And uh, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to uh, drop a comment here or email me or go to Plan With Chris if you want to chat and have a more formal appointment. I have an intake form on, on that site, planwithchris.com. Um, otherwise, any questions, let them hear. But thank you for watching. If you like the video, like it, you know, click the like button, subscribe. I'm uh, my goal is to do core question answers and also do other financial planning topics. And then with the, you know, with a more than occasional sprinkling of me visiting a Sonoma vineyard or meeting someone really interesting and doing an interview. So you, you get these little touches here and there of, uh, of additional stuff. So if you like that, um, you yeah, know, feel free to subscribe. Have a great day and thanks again for watching.